Hey, yo, yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the eCore Academy eLearning platform today. Thank you for joining us back again. If you're already subscribed to our channel, eCore Academy, if not, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on this video, as well as smashing that bell to get notified on any of our latest posts. All right, so let's get right into today's lesson. Today's lesson is all about triangle congruence in our geometry course, and it's all about discovering the different ways to identify congruent triangles. And of course, your video today is presented by me, AJ Raj, and I have a pleasure making these videos for you guys, so I hope you guys enjoy. And before we get into the meat of this lesson, I just wanted to show you these two cool pictures here. This is a truss bridge, and this is a, of course, a building uh, looking like a skyscraper. It looks like a skyscraper. And as you can see on this bridge, we have these different segments. And of course, they are triangles, and they see are seemingly congruent. And that's somewhat of a real-life application for this topic. Because in geometry, a lot of these topics may seem extremely you know, out of the blue, something that we haven't really seen in real life, or something that doesn't have meaning. But it actually does on very specific levels, on very high level um, in very high level scenarios. And as you can see here, this is a very simple scenario where you have congruent triangles. And that's very important on this bridge because it actually maintains stability and balance on this um, structure to keep it up. So that's also an important real life application for congruent triangles. So let's just, let's go, go, go ahead and figure out how to um, find out if two triangles are congruent or not, and what are the processes, what are the methods, and what are these um, key principles that we have to follow in order to, to do so. Yeah, so today's all about the process. Let's get right into it. So before we get into the actual parts of a triangle and having to identify whether or not they're measurements, or say, for example, there's certain relationships or alike, and before we even identify them as congruent triangles, we have to learn about the basics, these basic methods in which we use basic definitions and vocabulary words that we use to describe parts of the triangle. So today's all about, this, this subtopic is all about included sides and angles. So that's included sides and included angles. So the definition of an included side is the side between two angles of a triangle. So if you picture this, if you have a triangle and you have three angles, a triangle has three angles, triangle, three angles, as well as three sides. So if you have a um, one side that's between two angles of a triangle, it's the included side. So whenever you select two tri two angles of any uh, on, on any triangle two, and two of any of those three tr angles in that triangle, you'll see that they actually share one side. They have a common side. And for example, if you have a triangle ABC with side AC being that um, a, B, and C are points, as well as defining the angles, you can tell that side AC is the included side between angles A and C. And I just, I'll, I'll show you a diagram about that in the uh, next slide. And then of course you have your included angle, which is basically the opposite scenario. It's the angle between the two sides of a tri between two sides of a triangle, or the shared angle in that case. And in triangle ABC, angle A is the included angle between sides AC and AB. So that's that's important to know as well, because if you have two, since lines always meet at a um, common point in a triangle, any two lines can meet at a common point, and that common point is all, always representative of an angle, and therefore that angle is that shared angle of those two sides or the included angle. All right, so let's get into the next slide. And in order to further prove my point or further explain my point, uh, if say for example, you have angle A here, this is the point also defines your angle as well as um, two points defining your side. So say for example, you have angle A here, which is an acute angle, and you're trying to find what are the two sides that that actually make it a, that qualify it as an included angle. And if you look here, you have side BA and CA that actually both meet together in order to form angle A. Therefore, it's the included angle of sides BA and CA. And then in order to find a um, side length or an included side, you must use two different angles to identify that included side. So say, for example, we take angle A and angle B, and we're trying to find the side length that's between them or the one that connects them, and that's side AB. All right. So the first exact, the first postulate that we have here, postulates are different methods of proving uh, congruence. And we have 
um, quite a few here to go through today, but we'll go through them pretty fast since they're very similar to each other. But this is the first one. It's called side, side, side. And what side, side, side is, or SSS, it's the side, side, side congruence postulate. And that's one of the ways to prove if a triangle is congruent to another one. And the definition of that is if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three corresponding sides of another triangle, the two triangles are congruent. So let me just break down what that what, what exactly that means. So it means if three sides of one triangle, say for example we take triangle ABC, has the exact same congruent uh, sides as triangle DEF, it is said to be congruent. But it's also con a corresponding sides. So basically if you have a triangle and if all of its lengths are the same, all of its lengths in, in the same unit, say for example centimeters, if it has all of the lengths in the same amount of centimeters as another triangle, then they're both congruent. They're congruent meaning they're the same. They're the same exact triangle with the same exact angle measurements and the same exact size. So if you were to put them on top of each other, they would be completely identical. And it's important to tell that these are corresponding sides because they must be re related to each other. As you can see here, AC is corresponding to DF because they have the same exact angle measure in this congruency statement. And what these lines basically represent is that this side is congruent to this side, this side, this two dashes is congruent to the other triangle, which has two dashes, and this three dash side is also congruent to this other three dash side. And since you have three different congruent statements here, that means these two triangles must be congruent as stated here. This is the congruency sign. All right, so let's get into the next postulate. The next postulate is the side angle side or SAS congruence postulate. And it states that if two sides and the included angle in one triangle are congruent to two corresponding sides and the included angle in another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Well, basically that's very similar to the SSS um, postulate that we stated before. And basically what I'm saying here is that um, these lines and these angle marks, they measure that they're, they just uh, basically represent that they're similar in on, on another triangle. So since there's one arc here and one arc here struck, that means these are already given as equal measurements. That means these angles are already equivalent. And we're trying to prove that every other measure on this triangle is equivalent to the other triangle. So if we take a look here, this line means that this side is the same exact measure as this side. And these are all the given statements. And so basically GH is um, the exact same measure as KJ. HI is the same exact measure as KL because they have the double dashes. And this arc, this angle here, angle H, is congruent to angle K because it's already given to us. But we can actually just make an entire general statement that these two triangles must be congruent because of this uh, side angle side postulate. And the important thing to know is the placement of the words is very important as stated here. And basically, if you have your side angle side or SAS, it means that your side is then accompanied by an angle that's in between both sides. So the angle is in between the two sides. So that means it's an included angle. So it must be an included angle of any two sides that's given. And that's only one that can, there's only one angle in a triangle that can actually fit that qualification. And in this case, G for uh, side GH and IH, you can see that the common point is H, so it must be angle H that's shared. And as you can see here, this congruency statement proves that these two triangles are in fact congruent. And I wanted to recap here um, in the side, side, side postulate. If the, all the sides of the same measure are the same measure in two triangles, then the angles must be the same measure as well. So that goes hand in hand with this statement here because it actually proves that if there's a if, if there's a common ratio uh, amongst any of these any two triangles that are trying to be compared to find if whether or not they're congruent, it's about the three. It's about three measures that you're given. It has to be an equal ratio between your side, angle, or side. So you can either have two sides and one angle or two angles and one side, but you can never have three of each because then you're not given the measurement or any sort of rep representation of the other, meaning angles and sides. So it's important to know that if all, but uh, in fact, for side, 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 you can have three, but angles, but angle, angle, angle is not existent because you can always have different side length measures with the same exact angle measures. So yeah, I just wanted to re re reinstate that. And yeah, this is side angle side. So let's move on to the next postulate. This postulate's angle side angle, and it's ASA for um, abbreviation. 
It's our third congruence postulate, and it states that if two angles and the included side in one angle are congruent to two corresponding angles and the congruence side in another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So basically here, if we compare these two triangles here, what it's saying is it's taking side angle side and basically reversing that, and it's saying angle side angle. So instead of having your two sides and your one included angle, you're going to have one uh, one side and two uh, two angles, but that side's also going to be an included side. So two angles and that there that those two angles included sides. So as you can see here on this diagram, this visual representation, we can see that this angle here is of course congruent to this angle here because it has two arcs. And this one arc is also congruent to this arc. So N is congruent to R, P is congruent to S, and as you can see here, these uh, this side length and P is congruent to RS. Now, we need to prove that these two triangles ent are entirely congruent to each other. So we can actually prove that with the information given because as stated here, it follows the angle side angle postulate, and this included side is indeed included because it's in between and shared by these two angles. So that just proves that these MNP is uh, congruent to QRS. And this postulate is actually very similar to the angle-angle similarity postulate. Unlike congruent postulates, you have similarity postulates, which similarity is having a constant ratio in side length and um, having not necessarily the same angle measure uh, well, sorry, similar similar figures actually have the same exact angle measure, but they do not have the same side length. So basically, it's like enlarged figures compared with smaller figures, basically dilation. But for angle-angle similarity postulate, that's just basically saying that if you're given two angles in a triangle, you automatically know the third angle, so you can prove that they're similar. But in congruency, that does not necessarily work because they have to be the exact same, and you need represent representation from the side, so you have no representation of what the side lengths are. All right, I know that's a bit of a tongue twister and a longer um, concept to understand, but you'll get it in uh, our later videos because I'll be going through similarity and you can further understand that, what I just said. So let's move on to the next um, congruency postulate. This postulate is called the angle-angle side postulate, and it states that if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding sides and non-included side of the of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So what that's basically saying is it's taking the angle side angle and reversing that because as you can see here in the angle side angle statement um, it, side is in between the two angles because that's an included side however here it's an angle angle side so what that's saying is it's two angles in a triangle no matter what two it can be any two tri uh, angles in, in any triangle but the side has a special special qualification and it has to be a non-included side that means it can't be the included side, the angle that's shared between these two angles. It has to be the, uh, very uh, one of the other two side lengths. So as you can see here in this visual representation, uh, you have your two angles here. These are same as before, same exact angles, and they can be any two in the triangle. And as you can see here, they're given to this other equation, the other triangle, D, E, F, and they're seeing that angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. However, instead of having a, an included uh, side, one that's shared in between these two angles, we have another side. So these two sides are the non-included sides of a triangle, and it could be any one, but it has to be the same for the other triangle. And it shows that this tick mark, this one dash, shows that angle, um, I mean, so, sorry, excuse me, side AE is congruent to DF, and therefore that proves that the entire triangle is congruent under the angle-angle side postulate, congruence, congruence postulate. And in this postulate, it's very important to identify that your non-included side is the one that's being looked for because you might confuse it with your side angle side because it's it's very important that you're not uh, confused with that because instead of identifying it as a side as an angle angle side, it would actually be defined as a side angle side postulate congruency postulate, and that's not what we're looking for in this subtopic. So let's get on to the next slide, and this is our final congruency postulate. This is a bit of a uh, bonus one that I get for you guys. It's not necessarily complicated, but it's it, it's basically only valid for specific triangles, and in this case, it's a right triangle. So the hypotenuse leg congruency theorem, what it states is that if the hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle, just take that into note, right triangle, are congruent to the hypotenuse and corresponding legs of another right triangle, then the two right triangles, then the two triangles are congruent. 
So that's important to know here. It's actually very simple because it only refers to, on a right triangle, the hypotenuse and any other leg being related to the other right triangle. And the reason for that is it's very similar to the SSS postulate, which is the side, side, side postulate, because it relates to the Pythagorean theorem. And I'll go into depth about that. So what it basically does here is, since all right triangles have one thing in common, they all have right angles, you're already given one angle measure in your triangle. So you don't have to state it as an angle side side. This is specific to any right triangle. So what happens here is since you have an angle here, a right, right angle in any right triangle, you automatically have congruent angles here in both triangles, in both triangles ABC and PRQ. But then you're trying to look for side lengths in order to prove whether or not they are actually the entire triangles. Both of the entirety of their triangles are congruent. So what you're looking for here is you have to see if the hypotenuse and any other leg on the triangle are congruent. So the hypotenuse in a right triangle is the longest side in the triangle. And as you can see here, AC is the hypotenuse in this triangle, and PQ is the hypotenuse in this triangle. And they are indicated here by the one dash mark that they're both congruent. But then you're also given that AB and PR are both congruent as well. So that gives us the congruency statement that we need, that triangle ABC is congruent to PRQ. And the reason being is because if you're given any two sides in a right triangle, you're able to find the third side because you can plug it into the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared plus c a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Because whenever you're given two side lengths, a, b, or c, you can always find the next one with that equation. And with that being said, it's all you are automatically going to get three side lengths, which is your side 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 postulate, as well as representation with an angle in the triangle. So this is a very very um, uh, not necessarily a complex one, but it's a very good one to know, you know what I mean? Because it represents both sides of the triangle with limited measurements needed. All right, thank you guys for watching this video today through, e Academy, through our eCore Academy eLearning platform. Please make sure to like and subscribe this on this video. Visit our website link at www.ecoreacademy.org. Visit all of our socials at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as um, our Gmail at ecoreacademy at gmail.com. So thank you guys for tuning in today. Hopefully you guys got a lot of information out of this video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So it's been AJ, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.